What's going on, guys? Zuko back with another Shadowlands guys? video. Zuko oh my goodness! Back with I gotta a mute this. There we go. We're already off to a good start. Okay. Listen, <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> we gotta talk. You probably have seen by the title of this video, you're gonna see that we are in fact gonna talk about my last Paladin video and the fact that I'm never wrong. I think just want to be really clear right out of the gates that. I don't make mistakes in this game, uh, and that I'm never wrong. And I'm I'm glad we can all agree that that's true. <laughs> of course, that's not true. I make plenty of mistakes. Here's what I want to do in this video. I want to talk about a massive blunder that I made yesterday in my Paladin video. And I actually want to talk about the implications of that blunder in the community. I want to talk about why this is such a big deal, okay? We're going to talk about that, but first I want to recognize a couple people in the Twitch chat who, um, let's move this up here. Oh no, whoops, I'm going to move it down here. A couple people in the YouTube comments, I'm sorry, who revealed my mistake to me. So let's move this up. There we go. So here's what I want to show. Uh, oh, is this over here? How do I, can you guys see that? Oh, whatever. You know what we're going to do? We're going to grab it right here. Move it over here. There we go. So here's a picture, a screenshot of the, um, this is a screenshot of the YouTube comments and the two guys who revealed my kind of mistake to me. So this was a really big deal and um, something that I needed to make sure that I didn't, you know, I got to make sure I don't make these kinds of mistakes again, because I'm so glad that these two guys, um, Talk to me about this. So if you're unfamiliar, there's a rep paladin ability called Seraphim. It's a talent that you can take. And it essentially gives you a whole bunch of stats. And the tier set bonus for rep paladin also has a chance to proc Seraphim for you. When this initially came out, there was a bug basically that made the proc from your tier set would replace the Seraphim talent buff that you would put on yourself. And that was really bad. And I didn't think that they had changed it because I hadn't seen a WoWhead post on this or anything talking about whether or not they had changed it. So I guess Blizzard did hotfix it, and I didn't notice in my testing that it was, instead of my new Seraphim buffs replacing the big Seraphim buff I had, it was actually extending my Seraphim buff, which is really good. So I want a big shout-out to these guys. I'm going to say these names completely wrong, but uh, Sergei, uh, like Sergei, Sergei Vlad, and Shawnee Bonnie. Thank you guys both for um, mentioning this on YouTube, talking about it in the comments. It's really important that I recognize that you guys were a part of this and that you tried to keep me accountable here, which you did, and it's very good. And they're talking about, I'll, I'll explain the Seraphim part in a second, but I really wanted just to bring that up, that this is just really, really important that I recognize that these guys were correct in what they were saying, that I was wrong about this Seraphim change, and I'm going to talk about kind of the implications of that, why I think, why I'm taking this so seriously. So let's move this down here, and let's actually get rid of it. So why is this so serious? Once again, <clears throat> if, you, if you're unfamiliar, this is the Seraphim talent that you can take. It's a buff that lasts for 15 seconds. It gives you a bunch of stats, okay? This tier set bonus says when you get Art of War, you get Seraphim for three seconds. And I thought that this three second buff was replacing the 15 second buff. So you could activate your own Seraphim and then you might get a tier set proc and it replaces your 15 second Seraphim with a three second Seraphim. And that's really bad. We obviously don't want that, but that's not what happens. It actually extends the buff, which is really, really good. I said yesterday in my video that it replaces it and it, that's completely wrong. And I wanna make sure that I'm transparent about that. And the big reason why is because a couple things. Number one, if I put out a video talking about Rep Paladin in particular, which is an underplayed class, it's an underplayed spec. Not an underplayed class, Paladin's played lots, but Rhett is an underplayed spec. It's not a valued melee spec for most compositions. It's never in the meta, quote unquote. It's really important that I don't like miscalculate and say something wrong about Rep Paladin. In particular, something to the effect of like Blizzard doesn't care about Rep Paladin because there's a bug with their tier set bonus, and they haven't fixed it yet. There's this stupid bug with their tier set bonus that replaces your Seraphim, and Blizzard doesn't fix it because Blizzard hates Rep Paladins. That's the that's actually like the line of thinking that happens if I don't come out here and let you know that that's wrong. So I want to make sure I'm absolutely clear about about the mistake that I made yesterday. And 
And we need to be careful about, I need to be careful in the future about these kinds of mistakes because I don't want the perception of a class like Rep Paladin, a spec like Rep Paladin, to be bad. Because it's already like in the dumpster for no reason. People have a very bad perception of what Rep Paladin can do in a Mythic Plus environment, for example. And it's not really that justified. They're simply not a part of like the meta composition that all the top 1% of the 1% are taking into their high-end Mythic Pluses. And so because they're not a part of that meta, they're deemed as being horrible and you should never take them in a dungeon. And if I put out a video like this, T saying that there's a bug with the tier set bonus and Blizzard doesn't want to fix it because Blizzard doesn't care about rep paladins. It just helps to reinforce this idea that they're a bad spec and that Blizzard doesn't care about them. And all of that is untrue. Blizzard does care a lot about them and they fix the tier set bonus and it actually works perfectly fine. And I'm going to show you right now. So if you can see the top corner here where my buffs are, I'm going to start with Wings, and I'll do Wake of Ashes. I'm going to go right into Seraphim. You're going to see that I'll have a 15-second Seraphim buff, and then I'm going to start proccing Art of War. Okay, so here we go. Wings. Oh, Wings. And Seraphim. And then watch watch the, watch the Seraphim buff go. So it's at 14 seconds now. It's at 12. Waiting for those procs. Again, it is proc-based. I think it got extended right there a second ago. 8 seconds again. Back up to 8 seconds. Down to five seconds, three seconds, and we lost it, but that's okay. It did go longer than it was supposed to. I'm going to just run over here. Look, we're doing 20k, by the way, which is really cool. If we look at our auras, you can see that Seraphim was up for 27 seconds right there. The duration of Seraphim is 15 seconds. So we did, in fact, get an extension of Seraphim multiple times which means we had 8% more haste, crit, verse, and 13% more mastery for 27 seconds. And in that fight, that was 80% of that. So why am I showing you this? I just want to make sure the record is completely clear. I want to thank the guys in the YouTube comments for holding me accountable to this. And it's true, Seraphim actually works in tandem with the tier set bonus to help extend this buff, okay? And that's really good. That's actually really good. This buff is 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 really like this talent choice is quite strong now in this row because of this Seraphim buff. Now, what are the implications of this? The fact that the tier set does work. Whenever you benefit from Art of War, you get Seraphim for three seconds. If you have Seraphim rolling, it will just extend your Seraphim for three more seconds. I think you could roll this as a Kyrian, and you're gonna get a ton of benefit out of this. I think this works quite well with the Kyrian Covenant. I don't think it works as well with the Necrolord Covenant, and that's because of Divine Purpose. And I'm gonna show you what the divine purpose damage looks like. And that's because of Vanquisher's Hammer. Vanquisher's Hammer says you throw a hammer and then your next Templar's Verdict will trigger Divine Storm. You get two spenders in that window and you get the Divine Storm for free. Well, Divine Purpose says your Holy Power abilities, which is Divine Storm and, and Templar's Verdict, they have a chance to make your next Holy Power spender free. This is essentially double dipping. You get to double dip on Divine Purpose with Vanquisher's Hammer, with the Necrolord. If you're playing Kyrian, you don't get that at same ability. So I think that Seraphim is perfectly fine if you're running Kyr uh, Kyrian. But I think if you're running Necrolord, you kind of need to run Divine Purpose. And I'll show you the damage and why it's so good. The double dipping, you're going to see how many procs of Divine Purpose we get. It's absolutely insane. We get so many procs. So we did about 20k there in a very short window of time with... um. Uh, with Seraphim. We're not going to have Seraphim anymore. Instead, we're going to have the same setup. We're just going to take Divine Purpose. Again, you're going to start with Wings, go into Wake of Ashes. So Wake of Ashes, and then this, and then we go here, and here. Boom, we got to hit that. We got a reset on Wake of Ashes. That was pretty sweet. Oops, I hit a Templar's Verdict there. That should have been a Divine Storm. That's okay. We're waiting for our Wake of Ashes resets. We didn't get one there. That's unlucky. But that's okay. This fight's lasting a lot longer than the other one did, but that's okay. You can see the play style. We got a Wake of Ashes again. And we have our combo rolling right now. Oh, there's a Divine Purpose. There's another Divine Purpose. Two Divine Purposes in a row there. So you can see the extra damage that we can get out of that. You just get to set another Divine Purpose proc right now. Wake of Ashes proc. So... I think Rep Paladin is sort of, with this um, Necrolord playstyle, you are sort of turning into like a proc machine. Like, that's what it's all about. You're waiting for your tier set to proc either Wake of Ashes or um, your uh, Blade of Justice again. 
And if you get that proc, if you get a Wake of Ashes proc, then it's big damage. You're waiting for your Divine Purpose procs, which I just got two in a row. Again, there's a Wake of Ashes proc. You see what I'm talking about? It is definitely a little bit more of RNG. But people have been saying in the comments that it's, like, so RNG now. And it's just, it's not. Like, look at how many procs I just got on Wake of Ashes again. Another proc. Another proc on Divine Purpose. Send it out again for free. The, Van the Vanquisher's Hammer and Necrolord playstyle really lends itself to the divine purpose there's another wake of ashes proc like the rng is not that bad guys people are saying the rng is like so bad it's just not there's another divine purpose proc you get this all the time and we're getting seraphim every time we're getting that art of war proc there's another one there's seraphim for three seconds you can i just fit in an entire divine storm into that there's a wake of ashes and a divine storm in that seraphim window so there's a lot a lot of procs going on here which i know people just like don't like um but look at the uptime on Seraphim. We didn't even take the Seraphim talent. And we still had it up for like 30% of that time. So it's it's just good. It's just good all around. There's the Truth's Wake um, conduit that I wasn't I didn't take before. So you can see how many times did we get to cast. Um, I won't show up here. So how many times did we? That was a uh, maybe a two minute fight. And we cast Wake of Ashes seven times. Right? So that's 120 seconds divided by seven. That's a Wake of Ashes every 17 seconds, guys. Every 17 seconds. So it's really good. I really love the Necrolord playstyle. It has a ton of upfront burst when you're getting your Vanquisher's Hammers out in your ha Avenging Wrath window. But I do want to make sure that I'm just clarifying in this video. If you want to take Seraphim, it does in fact work with the tier set bonus. And it's really important to know that. I think Paladin is actually going to be very strong in 9.2. Particularly once they get their tier set bonus. I think the double legendary is also going to be fine. Like, it's going to be good. But the tier set bonus is absolutely where it's at for Paladin. Once they get this, they're going to be incredibly strong in Mythic+. Plus. I did 7 Wake of Ashes in 2 minutes. This is uncapped AoE. In a, in a Mythic Plus dungeon, if your tank goes and pulls like 20 guys, this is uncapped Radiant damage. Like, it's so incredibly good. Um, it also stuns uh, un undead and demons, right, for five seconds. So I love the tier set bonus, and I love the fact that it also will extend Seraphim if you want to take Seraphim. So I just want to make sure I clarify this for you guys. I'm sorry that I uh, messed up yesterday. I just didn't. My For some reason, it wasn't showing up very well in my top right-hand corner. And I think that I was just a little biased from all the complaining that I'd heard from the Paladins. And I assumed that it had still not been fixed. But it has, in fact, been, been fixed, and it works perfectly fine. Get these uh, extensions on Seraphim if you want to take this buff now. This is a legitimate build. It's going to do tons and tons of extra damage because of the stats that you're getting. So really strong. I think Paladin, Rep Paladin in general, is looking very strong in Mythic Plus heading into 9.2. So if you're w wondering about playing Rhett, I would highly suggest this Necrolord build. Um, you start out with the Vanquisher's Hammer Legendary. You actually have to craft it yourself. And then once you get the belt, the Girdle of Unity in like, in like uh, I don't know, 15 or 20 days, then you can switch to this legendary, the Divine Storm one. And then you're off to the races, and it's going to be really, really good. So that's it, guys. That's it for this video. I just wanted to make sure I clarified. Thank you so much to the guys who commented in on the in, in YouTube there. Make sure that you guys keep commenting. This is why we're here. This is part of the conversation. I don't ever – I'm, I'm going to try to make sure that I'm always maintaining a channel that is open, that is transparent. I'm always trying to be transparent with you guys. And if I make a mistake, I will totally admit it. And I will uh, make sure to highlight you guys in the comments who show the fact that I've made a mistake. Because it's really important. Really, really important. So thank you so much for the accountability. Let's keep the conversations going about all these classes in the comments below. And if you want to come see my stream, go to twitch.tv slash Vibes. You can catch me there. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, please do that. It helps me out a lot. And join the Discord. I'll have the Discord in the link below the video, okay, to this one. So until the next one, I'll see you guys later.